I believe that, uh, you know, there are values, there are priority uh, policies that we need to pay attention to. And we need, our, if our faith does not inform our vote, and if our, our faith and our biblical belief in the Bible does not inform how we vote, then basically this, it's a charade because we actually, what you vote is what you really believe. Uh, and one of the statements that's in, in our founding documents, it says that we believe that men were created equal with certain unalienable rights that were given to them by their creator. So our founding fathers believed that human rights were not given to us and granted to us by the government. They were actually given to us by our creator. So they recognized that. And among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you start at the top with life, that is, to me, the primary uh, policy that I pay attention to. Life that begins at conception, life that values the image of God as the imprint upon every human soul. <clears throat> that every human being is an image bearer. Whether you are black, white, brown, whether you are young or old, you bear the image of God and we need to value the image of God. When you begin to undervalue the image of God and the humanity of people, that's when society begins to degenerate. Uh, and for me, a primary issue is the issue of life. I believe that life begins at the moment of conception, uh, and I believe that the safest place in the world should be in a mother's womb, and I believe that human rights are extended not just to the woman who is carrying that child, but to the child that is being carried, and, it, and it's, not a, it's not a human being once it is born, it is a human being, once an egg and a sperm, once an egg is fertilized, and that is where life begins, that's where God begins to knit them together in the womb, and just because they're not able to sustain themselves, take care of themselves, and to defend themselves or speak up for themselves does not mean that they have less human rights than I do. And I believe that as a Christian, we have a responsibility to speak up for those who have no voice. Uh, and I think it's fascinating that we live in a society today where we're fighting for women's rights, but at the same time, we can't define what a woman is. And I, I think that uh, we, we need to be clear about definitions, and life begins at conception. And so number one issue for me is that, and I think the biggest stain that we have on our culture today is that we have an existing genocide that is taking place where there are 1.3 million abortions that are conducted every single year in America. There's actually been more abortions take place since Roe v. Wade was overturned a couple of years ago. And that is a stain on our nation. And if you think we're going to stand before God and get off scot-free because we have done that, Make no mistake about it, America will be under the judgment of God just like we were because of the sin of slavery. The sin of slavery was an attack against the image of God and image bearers uh, that for hundreds of years we allowed that to take place and we entered into a civil war in a long period of time. Even now we're still grappling with some of the ramifications of that. And abortion is a stain, it is a national sin that God is calling us to repent of. The fact that we, uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, the argument for those who were pro-choice was we want it to be legal, rare, uh, and safe. And today, it's we want it to be available at any given moment. You can do it all the way up to the last second of the third term when a baby is fully viable. A baby is fully viable at about 22 weeks. We know that because our grand, granddaughters were delivered shortly after that and, and were alive. And Celia is still alive and thriving and flourishing. She could have been aborted very easily. And in fact, um, our daughter was encouraged uh, that that was an option. And I'm so proud of my daughter who looked at the nurses and my son-in-law looked at the nurses and the doctors and says, we will never make that decision because we believe that it's in God's hand. Life is in God's hand. And uh, so I'm, there's, there's more policies, but I'm, I'm harping on that one because even now, both parties have really shifted to being pro-choice. One's just more pro-choice than the other. 
uh, and the argument that, oh, it just goes back to the states. Imagine if we had said that about slavery. Oh, slavery just goes back to the states. No, if it's morally wrong, then it should be undone. And I don't care how popular that is or unpopular that is, whether that offends a whole bunch of people, whether I lose my job and I live in a cardboard box, I will stand on the fact that we have to defend the unborn.